basically a lava a lava simulation is essentially a fluid simulation all the only difference is that we're actually adjusting the values of the fluid simulation to match that of lava so we're adjusting things like the viscosity and what is called the diffusion and in fact i think the diffusion might be the only thing you're really changing significantly but it actually makes a huge difference and then you can actually adjust the speed of the simulation which will in turn make things look like lava so and for anybody who's on the live and i missed your questions i apologize trying to get to everybody and i totally will after we get through this so so far i think everything is looking good now i'm going to teach you guys a little trick because what i want to do is aim to create my um, lava simulation as best as I can here. Now let me go back and find that really quick. I actually think it was in my Instagram Reels uh, or maybe it was YouTube tutorial. I'd, I'd have to type it in guys, I'm so sorry. I should have had this one all figured out here. Lava, mm, it's somewhere. But I promise you I will put it at the, begin the beginning or the end of this video to show you guys what the result was. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this because I do pretty much remember. So the first thing we're gonna need is a physics simulation. So let's just go ahead and add a mesh. Let's add a cube, all right? And let's move it somewhere in our scene that we know we want our physics simulation to be. I want our physics simulation to be right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the cube. I'm gonna to go to Object, Quick Effects, Quick Liquid, and it's gonna immediately bring us into wireframe mode because we're ready to go ahead and look at our simulation. And just like that, we have a physics simulation. But it's really not looking like lava and it's completely the wrong size. So let's go ahead over to our settings and I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to adjust in order to make this lava simulation happen. So let me go ahead and click on our domain, right? When you go ahead and add a quick liquid, it's gonna give you a domain automatically. So that's what we're looking at right here. So now that we have our domain selected, Let's go over to our liquid domain settings. Make sure you're on liquid. For resolution divisions, we can keep that at 32 for now. For time scale, I'm actually gonna put 0.5 for right now. And then under liquid, we wanna click on diffusion, right? And we wanna pop that open. And then this is these are the items that we're gonna adjust to our liking until we like what the lava looks like. So everything right in here is really the most important. Um, and then where it says replay, you want to click on that and you want to click on all. Sorry guys, I have my little windows thing down here. Right here where it says replay, you want to click on all. Um, and then I'm just going to set my end frame to 100. And I'm going to go into my output properties and I'm also going to set that end frame to 100 as well because we're only going to be baking 100 frames here. I don't really want to go overboard with this. I know you don't see anything and that's because I have not... Uh, baked the render yet or sorry baked the simulation yet let's just go ahead and bake and see what we have so far and kind of go from there um, but before we do that I'm gonna actually adjust my domains height so with my domain selected S Z to scale on the Z axis I'm gonna bring this up now here is where you really want to pay attention because you want the bottom of your domain to be right about where the floor is if that looks good and again I'm gonna scale it back up on the Z axis and I'm gonna make sure that the the bottom is more or less exactly where the ground is. We can move the ground once we're done baking the simulation, but for now, this looks really good. Now, for our lava, this little cube is where our lava is gonna flow out of, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that right there. I'm gonna move it towards the top. You guys can have your lava flow out wherever you'd like. This is where I want it. Instead of geometry, we're gonna actually choose outflow, or um, I think it's inflow, sorry. I'm pretty sure it's inflow. We're going to double check after we bake. So now we want to head back over to our domain, click on bake all, give that a quick second. And now we should have a flowing liquid. Now, as you guys can see, it looks like a normal liquid simulation, but we're going to start to adjust all of these settings so that we can fine tune exactly how we want this liquid to look. And then once we have everything the way we like it, we're going to then add a Taurus. And what this Taurus is going to do is it's going to act as a physics collision, um, uh, sorry, a fluid effector. Sorry guys. And the fluid effector is actually going to have our lava touch that fluid effector, flow over it, and that's where we can get into very, very interesting effects. So, so far this is looking really awesome. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and click on mesh yet because we're not ready for that. So I'm gonna free all, and we're gonna go ahead and adjust some settings here. Now for the base, I believe I chose five, and then surface tension, we'll just put that at two for now. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and bake this again. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Now, as you can see, 
it's looking okay, but I had, do have to double, double check the actual settings that I used for my, um, my original lava simulation. So let me go ahead and find that, <laughs> which is somewhere. I might have to cut the video and come right back to this, guys, because I do need to find those exact, here it is, lava testing. All right, I'm glad I was able to find that because these, this actual um, physics properties for the domain are super important. So I'm in my original file here, guys. I even have my Taurus right here. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the rendered view real quick. Now, the domain is going to look like this because this is our lava shader. But that is, that is just what the li liquid is actually going to look like once we render the simulation or once we bake the simulation. But let's go over to our domain and check on these diffusion settings. So the base is 10, exponent is 1, and surface, surface tension is 2. So 10, 1, 2. So remember that. Let's head back over to our lava scene, save this, and make, make all of our settings proper, 10, 1, and 2. And then let's go ahead and rebake this and see what it looks like now. And then we'll have to go back if we have any settings that we missed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Now that looks more like lava. Do you see the way that it hits the floor? And it kind of just spreads out very slowly. And now the only thing we have to adjust before we uh, turn this into a mesh is we can adjust the resolution divisions. Um, or we can also adjust the actual time scale. So right now it's at half. It's at 0.5. So I'm gonna free all and show you guys what it would look like if it was at 0.25. And let's go ahead and bake this simulation again. So again, this is just gonna look like it's flowing slower now. But if this is what you're looking for, this is awesome. So I'm pretty happy with this, guys. Um, you could go ahead and click mesh here. And then again, you guys can go back and continue to, so I'm gonna bake this one more time. You guys can basically up these resolution divisions to whatever you like. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this would look like as a mesh. So it doesn't get very far. So I'm gonna actually bring this up to frame 150. I'm gonna free all. And then I'm actually going to quickly just adjust our time scale. I'm gonna make it 0.5 for now. Oops, 0.5, perfect. And then I'm gonna bake one more time and then let's watch this as a mesh and see what it looks like as it gets to frame 150. Now you are gonna have to go into your output properties and change that to 150 as well so that we can actually play everything back to that frame. And now let's go ahead and play that. Now that looks more like lava, doesn't it? So we're pretty much done with that. Now we can add in our fluid effector. So let's go ahead and click on our domain again. Let's go over to our baking area, free all. Let's go to our wireframe mode. All right, see if you're following me here. Add mesh torus. Bring the torus up. Make sure it's within our domain and smaller than our domain. And it's not inside our domain. It is now. Everything looks good so far. Um, and then this is what we want to do, guys. We want to go ahead and do object apply scale. And then we want to give this a fluid property type fluid, or sorry, type effector. Um, effector type collision and then surface thickness will start with 0.1 we'll bake the simulation and we'll see what that looks like so another thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this just a little bit off to the side so that when our fluid flows out we can see it actually hitting the cylinder so let's go ahead and bake all all right and let's see what this ends up looking like give it a quick second it's gonna go all the way to frame 150 and as you guys can see we have the fluid being affected by the Taurus, just like that. So super simple to add that in. And then the setting that you want to adjust, if you guys go to solid view here, you'll notice that it's going to cut through the cylinder a little bit. The reason that's happening is because of our surface thickness. Right now it's 0.1. If you adjust it to say maybe 0.2 and you rebake, we're gonna get something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and rebake this and see if it's more accurate in terms of where the lava is touching the cylinder. Okay, I hope you guys are still following this. I know this is a lot, but I promise you if you do these settings properly, um, you'll get an amazing simulation. And it looks like as we play this back, everything looks to be touching the cylinder, or sorry, the not the cylinder, the Taurus, just in a way where it is flowing over it. Now it might be cutting through just a little bit. If we go inside the cylinder, you'll notice, yes, it is cutting through, but to be honest, you're not really gonna be able to tell from a distance. Another thing I noticed real quick, guys, 
this object was within our domain, which is fine because it doesn't have any physics properties, but I'm actually going to move it. I'm gonna quickly snap to our camera and I'm just gonna move it on the Y axis so that it's a little bit more away from our lava and we can actually see what our lava is doing. Let's go over to rendered view real quick. Now, I just wanna show you guys something before we add in this shader and animate our Taurus. As you can see, Blender by default gives this a glass shader with an IOR of 1.33, which is the default index of refraction of water. So we're gonna go ahead and add our own shader when we're ready, but look how good this looks already. It looks like lava or maybe like glue at the moment. And then you guys can adjust your settings to whatever it is that you desire. So let me go ahead and animate this, but the first thing I'm gonna do is actually free our bake one more time. And after we animate our Taurus, then we can go ahead and start adding our shader in. So let me go ahead and click on this right here, this Taurus. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, bump that up to two resolution or two in the viewport, shade that smooth. Um, and then you guys can also make this whatever you'd like in terms of, sorry, in terms of your material. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna go to frame one, insert rotation. I'm gonna go all the way to frame 150 and I'm just gonna rotate it on the Y axis 180 degrees. Actually, why don't we just do 360? Okay, now let's go ahead and play this back. Make sure it's properly animated. It is, we're good to go. And now this should be affecting our fluid flow. So let's go ahead and click on our cube or our domain cube. And let's go ahead and bake the simulation one last time. Now Blender is gonna calculate the um, actual motion of that Taurus and how it will affect the liquid. So let's go ahead and double check that it is indeed doing that. Let's go to our solid view press play and as you can see it is properly affecting our liquid and it looks really good now you guys are probably thinking Kenny that doesn't look really realistic that is totally fine if you guys want you can actually free all you can go and scroll up instead of 32 subdivisions you can do 50 or 80 I will show you what 50 looks like and then we'll call it on that and we'll move on to the material so now we're doing 50 resolution divisions, which means those particles are gonna be smaller and thus more realistic when it comes to the actual render. So, or sorry, the actual simulation. So go ahead and wait for that to be done. As soon as that is done, we will go ahead and check that out. Give that a quick second, almost done. And boom. All right, let's go ahead and check it out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this. And it's looking really, really, really good. Um, it looks almost a little bit too liquidy for lava, but as of right now, I'm happy with this in terms of the tutorial and I wanna move on to the shader. So the shader is something special. So let me go back over to my other lava project and I'm actually going to grab the shader from this project and then I am going to import it into the other project. So let me just copy this. Copy that, save, and I'm gonna go back into my lava scene. There is our shader right there. So this shader is very, very special because it was completely designed around an image. And I'll show you guys what I mean in a second here. Let's go ahead and go to our rendered view and take a look at our shader. So this is the shader right here. Now, all I really have to do is click on our domain shift click on our sphere and copy the material over. And just like that, we have our lava. But you guys probably wanna know how to create this lava shader from scratch, right? It's actually pretty simple. And I'm really excited to show you the technique that I showed in a previous tutorial on how to make this lava shader. Um, super simple stuff here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and hide from the rendered view and from a viewport, our original cube that acted as our fluid object flow. I'm also going to click on our um, cylinder real quick and I'm just gonna copy the material from the floor just to give it a little bit of a rocky material. That looks pretty good. So it's like this little rocky torus that is um, letting the lava flow over it. And as you can see, this looks really, really, really good. Now you guys are probably thinking this is a little stylized. I think it looks great and there's a little bit of emission to it as well. So let's go ahead and hop into the nodes and I'm gonna explain what is happening here. So I have my domain selected. I'm gonna hop over to our shading tab with our domain selected. 
and let's go ahead and go into our object settings. And as you can see, this is the node setup for our material. So I'm going to zoom in so I can show you guys how this material is being affected when we adjust these things. So at first glance, it might be a little bit